The required practical we're going to look at is a titration and a titration is used in chemistry to work out the concentration of an unknown solution and we use some specialist bits of glassware which I'm going to explain how they're used and why they're used uh, particularly. So for this experiment today we're going to look at the reaction between a sodium hydroxide solution and we know the concentration of this one, it's 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed, and a sulfuric acid solution, and we don't know the concentration of this one. We know it's around 0.05 mole per decimeter cubed, but we don't know the exact concentration. And so this method allows us to work that out. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure out an exact volume of our sodium hydroxide solution. Now when we want to measure out an exact volume, the correct piece of equipment to use is a pipette. And this is a pipette. Pipettes are not those plastic dropper things that you've been using since year seven. This is a bulb pipette and it has been designed to measure exactly 25 centimetres cubed of solution when used correctly. Now, we can't um, just suck the solution up into the pipette using our mouths. We used to. Um, when I was young, that was sort of the way we were meant to do it. But obviously, health and safety says we can't uh, suck sodium hydroxide into our mouths. So we now use safety fillers. Um, they come in a variety of different forms, but these are the ones that we most commonly use. And the way we work them is we attach the safety filler to the top of the pipette. But we don't want to hold our pipette down here and jam on the filler like that because there's always the risk of the pipette snapping and going into the palm of our hand. And I have actually seen that happen and I've seen the end of a broken pipette in someone's hand, so we don't want to do that. So the way we get around that is we hold right at the top of the pipette and then we just firmly push and twist the filler on just so it's kind of holding it firmly, okay? Um, but it's not jammed on too tight. So we can put our pipette into our sodium hydroxide solution and then the little wheel on the side allows us just to suck the solution and you can see the level of it rising here into the pipette. Obviously it travels more slowly through the fat bit and then goes rapidly up the thin bit as we go past. There we go. Now if you take the the level almost all the way to the filler, so it's here at the moment, and then take your filler off quickly, we can see that here there is a line and we need to get our level of sodium hydroxide exactly on that line and then we know we've got 25 centimetres cubed. So to bring the level down we need to just release the pressure on the top of the pipette now, if you look closely, you might see that the surface of the sodium hydroxide is actually curved. And that's because water is very slightly sticky. And so it sticks to the sides of the tube and creates this curved surface known as a meniscus. And we need to get the bottom of the meniscus to sit on the line. So we bring it down to our eye level. We raise it off the bottom of the beaker and then just twist it gently on our thumb. And that lowers it oh, exactly so it's on the line. We can then just take our thumb off and run it into the flask. Now, as it reaches the end, you just let those last couple of drops out. But you might see that there's a small amount of sodium hydroxide still in the tip of the pipette. Now, you don't blow that bit out because when the piece of glass was made, that tiny bit that stays at the end was taken into account. So if you blow it out, you actually add more than 25 centimetres cubed. So we just let it drip and then we take it out and lay it down. So that's taken a known volume of our sodium hydroxide of known concentration and we've put it into our beaker. So we're now onto our second solution, which is our sulfuric acid. Now we don't know the concentration of this, remember, and we're gonna place that in our burette. Now our burette is a graduated piece of glassware, so there is a scale on it, so it can measure a different volumes. And we fill from the top. Before we fill, we need to make sure our tap is closed. And the tap, I hope you can see this, is vertical when it's open. And if we twist it to horizontal, it's then closed. So we need to make sure it's closed before we start filling. 
The other important thing is we don't fill above eye level because we don't want to accidentally spill sulfuric acid in our face. So we bring this burette down as low as we can. And if necessary, we can put it on a stool next to us. But I think I can just about reach, put a funnel in, and then slowly pour the sulfuric acid into the burette. The zero is at the top because it's how much we've added, not how much we've put into the burette. So once you've gone over the zero mark, just raise the burette up a little bit and open the tap while looking at eye level and let the level of the acid go down so it is exactly sitting on the zero mark. Again, there is a meniscus, a curved surface to the acid and you want the bottom of the meniscus to sit on the zero line. So now I've got my unknown acid in my burette and I need to know what volume of this acid reacts with my 25 centimetres cubed of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. So I raise my burette up just a little bit, put a white tile underneath and then the flask of sodium hydroxide can go under the burette. Before I do that, I'm going to add some pH indicator. This is methyl orange and different indicators work for different types of titration, but this one works well for this one between sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. And you'll see that in the sodium hydroxide, it's a, a yellow color. So popping that underneath, the first titration we do is always a rough titration. So we just need to know roughly what volume of the acid I'll need to add. So to do that, I'm going to open the tap with my left hand and I'm going to swirl with my right hand. And I'm going to look for a sign of a color change, a permanent color change in the flask. And that'll show me the end point. So I open up the tap and I swirl. As you approach the end point, you will probably start noticing a pink colour appearing in the middle of the flask, but that's not the end point because even if I get a bit of pink, if I swirl it, it goes back to yellow. It's that permanent pink that I'm aiming for. Now it looks like I'm doing it fast, that's because this is rough. Oh, I'm nearly there. Just disappearing, just a little bit more, I think. There we go. You see the obvious colour change as I reach the end point. Now again, looking at my burette, I can measure how much solution has gone in. Reading from the bottom of the meniscus, that is 14.3 centimetres cubed, each little graduation being 0.1 of a centimetre cubed. So having done the titration once roughly, I know I need about 14.3 centimetres cubed of my acid to neutralise my 25 centimetres cubed of sodium hydroxide. But that was a bit inaccurate because obviously I was adding the acid quickly and I've probably gone past the point where it first turned pink. So once you've done a rough titration, you should do at least two, maybe three accurate ones um, by adding the acid dropwise as you reach the end point. So with a fresh sample of sodium hydroxide, I add my indicator again, same amount as last time, keep it fair. Place that under the burette but this time I can probably add say 13 centimetres cubed of my acid quite quickly because I know it's going to take about 14.3. So I just open my tap, watch my burette as the level runs down to 13, I'm not worrying about the colour change, I don't even need to swirl it. And as it approaches 13 I can stop it give it a swirl. I know it looked pink then, but as I swirl, it's gone back to yellow. So I haven't reached the end point. I haven't got total neutralization. And now I can add the acid slowly. You need a steady hand for this. So I want to just open the tap so it is dripping one drop at a time. Keep it swirling. Ooh. And do you know what? I think that was it because you can see it's not gone to that bright pink colour we had before, but it's certainly not yellow anymore. So this is a much more accurate titration and is fact at just over 13.1. So I definitely overshot the end point on the first one. What I would now do just to confirm that that was right. Again, I would take a new sample of sodium hydroxide. I would repeat 
and I would aim to get at least two readings that agree within 0.1 of a centimetre cubed. So if I did it again, got 13.1 or 13.2, I could say those were reliable results and enough so that I could go and do my calculation. So now we've done our titration, we can do our calculation to work out the exact concentration of our sulfuric acid. So to start with, we must balance the equation between the sodium hydroxide and the sulfuric acid during the titration. And if we look at the equation as I've written it on the board to start with, you'll see it's not balanced. We've got two sodiums in our sodium sulfate salt on the right hand side, but only one in our sodium hydroxide on the left hand side. So to balance that, we will need to put a two in front of the sodium hydroxide. We can't change the formula because sodium hydroxide is NaOH, it, it isn't anything else. But we can have two lots of it. Now that then gives us our two sodiums, but it also gives us two oxygens and two more hydrogens. So if we balance the oxygens and hydrogens, we just put a two in front of the water on the product side. So step one is always have the balanced equation. And then the next thing I always do is think about what I know. And I know the volumes of both the acid and the alkali that I used. I know the concentration of one of them. So I started with my sodium hydroxide in the pipette. I had 25 centimetres cubed and I know it was a concentration of 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed. So moles per decimeter to the negative three here is the same as moles per decimeter cubed, so forward slash decimeters cubed. Now from volume and concentration, I can work out the number of moles of sodium hydroxide I had initially. And the equation I need here is moles is concentration times volume. Now my concentration is in moles per decimeter cubed, but yet my volume is in centimeters cubed. So to make this equation work, I must have volume in decimeters cubed as well. And there are a thousand centimeters cubed in a decimeter cubed. So my volume is 0.025 of a decimeter cubed. Multiply those together. I have 0 0.0025 moles of sodium hydroxide to start with. Now, my sulfuric acid. I know my volume from my titration result. My accurate titration was 13.1 centimeters cubed. But I don't know my concentration. That's what we're trying to find out. So to work out concentration, I'll need moles as well as volume. And this is where we need our balanced equation. From here, we can see that two moles of sodium hydroxide react with one of sulfuric acid. So it's a two to one ratio. I didn't have two moles, I had 0.0025 moles. So the ratio still applies, so I'll have half that number of moles of sulfuric acid. So I've now got a volume and I've got a number of moles. And you may have learnt the equation this way, that concentration is moles over voles. So the moles, 0.00125, the volume, don't forget, convert to decimeters cubed, 0.0131, and that gives us an answer of 0 0.095 moles per decimeter cubed. And one thing you will notice is initially we thought the acid would be about 0.05 molar, but in fact it's nearly twice as strong.